Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. Welcome back to another Countdown to Christmas. It's Bugmas 2018. If you've missed my two previous years of Bugmas, I shall direct you to the playlist. And it's my little five day countdown to Christmas and tasting different little bugs. Last year, I actually skipped Bugmas and did Gutmas instead, where I did a five day countdown tasting different types of offal. So I'll put that playlist up above as well. So Bugmas returns, but this time instead of eating a different type of bug each day, I'm going to show you how to grow mealworms and how to cook recipes with them. So the practice of eating insects or bugs is called entomophagy and it's practiced all over the world. It's mostly in the West where it's looked at as kind of something strange or odd. So I have tasted mealworms before, but I've never harvested them, I've never grown them, I've never cooked them myself. Although I have cooked cricket cookies before, I'll put a link to that recipe down below. But like I said, I've never actually cooked them or grown them myself. And I'm absolutely fascinated by the process because it actually is very, very easy. A lot of people grow mealworms at home for their pets if they've got reptiles or chickens. So the plan today is to show you how to build yourself your own breeder box that has separate sections. Now the benefits of having the separate sections is basically you're separating the different life cycles of the mealworm. The mealworm is the part that we eat or the chickens will eat. It is the larval stage, the one that kind of crawls around. And then there are other stages as well, including the egg and the adult beetle stage. Now we want to separate them because the beetles will eat the larva and there can be some cannibalism. So we separate them to have a more efficient system. So this is just a Sterilite three drawer plastic container that I purchased at Target. I believe it was about 10 or $11. And this system works for the scale that I'm doing. Some people have really large operations, have lots of stacks, big drawers. But for me, this is what I'm doing. I'm just starting out. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get yourself some mealworms to start the whole cycle. Now I went to my local pet shop and I picked up two containers of mealworms that you use to feed your reptiles and I started this process but they never pupated. And so afterwards when I did some research I learned that some growers apply chemicals to the mealworms to prevent them from pupating and what happens is the mealworms just get really really big and that's what they call superworms and those are fed to larger reptiles. So my box of mealworms were not labeled superworms, they were just labeled mealworms, and they were mealworm size, but chemicals had been applied to them unbeknownst to me. So they never pupated, so I never got to do the cycle. And if they do pupate, apparently, they are sterile. So I just fed them to my chickens, my chickens love them. So in order to have any success with this growing process, you need to get worms that have not been treated. So I will put the link down below to where I purchased my mealworms. I didn't go to the pet store, I ordered them online. So I ordered 2,000 mealworms and it was about 18 or $19. And as soon as you get your mealworms, you want to put them in some kind of container and give them some food. So mealworms will eat pretty much any kind of cereal grain, anything that has meal in it. You know, mealworm, corn, meal, oat, meal. <laughs> I think a lot of growers like to use wheat bran or oat bran, but oatmeal was very easy for me to get. I could just get a container from the grocery store, so that's what I've been using. It's a nice big substrate too, so you can see when it's time to clean out the mealworm drawer. Also to that drawer, you're gonna add either a carrot slice, a potato slice, or an apple slice, and they'll nibble on that, and that's what will give them their water. You're gonna change that every few days because that tends to get moldy. Same thing with the bedding food substrate. After a few days, you'll see that it'll go down and you wanna replenish that as it goes along. So this drawer has all the mealworms in it. This is the larval stage, and this has the oatmeal and the mealworms. I started this on October 13th, and they were in their larval stage, and after about five days, I started noticing these. And this is the pupil stage. And this is the stage where they're kind of hibernating and transforming into a beetle. So I've separated them into this tray and this will become the beetle tray. Now the next thing I need to do is cut out a portion of the floor of this and replace it with some screening and use some hot glue and affix that to the bottom. So after one to three weeks, they will emerge as a beetle. They will find a mate, mate and create eggs and this allow the eggs to fall down to this bottom tray. And this will have some clean oatmeal down below. Now the eggs will sit in there and they will hatch and they'll be very, very, very tiny, tiny microscopic practically little mealworms in there and they'll start to eat and grow. Now some people like to have multi-tiered systems where every week they rotate the eggs and larvae into different trays so they know how old the mealworms are and therefore they can kind of size them that way. 
but since I'm just doing this for my chickens and for as a little experiment, I'm just gonna stick with three trays. So mealworms do have a bit of a smell. I wouldn't call it unpleasant. It's a bit of kind of a musky smell and you do have to clean out the frass. So I got myself a large sifter. I just purchased at Ikea for $3 and you pour the oatmeal in there and shake out the frass. It's apparently a really great fertilizer. So just pour that onto your plants or into your garden. Put the mealworms back into their drawer with some new oatmeal and the oatmeal that they haven't chewed up and just continue the whole process. So there is a little bit of maintenance. You have to make sure they have food and you have to make sure that they have a little bit of water and you have to kind of keep rotating things. But pretty simple procedure for food for not only yourself, but for your chickens or for your pets. So I hope you guys enjoy Bugmas 2018. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Tulu, take care. Bye. <laughs>